Welcome to the next lecture of our course and in this lecture we'll be talking about using task and task of type T. Just to recap what we have discussed so far in this particular section, we have been talking about some non-async nature of the web client which is going to block our code because it is a non-async code so that every time while you try calling both the requests and the response is going to be blocked until both the operations are successfully completed. And that was the problem because we are blocking the main thread which is currently running. So that's the reason why it is keep blocking. And then we talked about how we can unblock this using some inbuilt HTTP client method which is going to be using some async await operation which is going to give us an get async method which is going to be awaited and it's going to free up the main thread and then it is going to get the response and then it is going to again use a read as string async method which is going to be performing a reading of the data as a string and it is going to be awaited until the whole parsing of the data is successfully done. That is how this whole method was done and that's how it is going to free up our main thread because you can see that the first result is going to be available for the main thread until the second response comes back. So we saw how this whole coding was actually done until our last lecture and we were much clearer. But now, what if the library that is without an async method? So we saw that the HTTP client came as a savior for us to give us an async method. But what if there is a code which has not got an async method at all? So what if our automation code that we are trying to write is not without an async method while our code that we have to write has to be an async code? So how do we actually resolve this problem? But guess what guys, I know this has nothing to do with the playwright itself, but still while we write the framework starting our next section, you'll understand that we are going to use the task.run, task.delay and task.factory method quite a lot because those are things that is going to build up our whole framework itself. So I highly recommend you to please watch these videos. I know while you came here to just learn playwright and I'm talking about some asynchronous programming feels to you like it's not making you much sense but these are things which is going to make more sense while we start writing the framework itself. So please stick with me. I know it's quite hard to understand sometimes. Please watch this video two or three times so that you get the handle of it but once you start getting handle of it, once you start writing the code yourself, you will gain more familiarity with this async coding and then you'll be fine what I'm really talking about. Well as that said, now getting back to our content, what if the library is without an async method? How do we resolve this particular problem? Well, welcome to task. Task is the actual answer to resolve this particular problem. In C sharp asynchronous programming, task and task of type T are types that represent asynchronous operation. They are part of the task parallel library and are used to manage and represent the progress of asynchronous work. Again, I'm talking about something called as task parallel library. What is this? TPL. Well, task parallel library or TPL is a set of public types and APIs in the system.threading and system.threading.task namespace of c -sharp And the purpose of the TPL is to make developers more productive by simplifying the process of adding parallelism and concurrency to application. So while I'm talking about the non-blocking nature of the code, what I'm essentially telling in the asynchronous programming is that we are essentially making our whole system to run in parallel. And this parallelism is achieved using this async and await operation or the task type that I'm talking about right now. And all these are part of the TPL or the task parallel library, which is going to bring the parallelism and concurrency to our application. And the TPLs dynamically scale the degree of concurrency to use all available processor most efficiently. And in addition, the TPL handles the partition of works, scheduling of thread on the thread pool, cancellation support, state management, and other low level details. So these are things that TPL really handles much, much better for you without you dealing with all these threading and, and handling those thread for you. Those are very, very complex and Microsoft has really made things much, much easier for us using the power of the new advancement Microsoft has made starting 2015. Well, as that said, how does this task really work? Well, as you can see, there is a method called as run method in the task, 
which is going to run any sync heavy code block or methods inside this particular code block. So all you have to do is you need to just call this task.run and then you need to use a lambda expression or otherwise called as a delegate to run the method that you are trying to run over here. So this is basically an expression or a delegate or however that you wanted to call it. And But this is how you are gonna use the task.run method to run a non-synchronous code for you over here. So this is going to run this whole things for you much, much easily inside this code block. So essentially you can port your existing code, which is the fetch data method into the task.run to make this response to be a non-blocking. And this is what you really have to do. You just have to do the task.run of this particular fetch data, and it is gonna make this particular code to run asynchronously for you. And you have to actually wait, because we don't really have an await keyword here. You have to actually use a wait method over here, which is available as a part of the task. And you have to ensure that the operation is fully complete. And only then you can print the line to see the responses coming up or not. So let's see this in a demo so that you can understand the details more clearer. So if we go back to our code that we have been writing on a synchronous web client over here, and if I try to copy this particular code, and if I'm gonna paste this code over here, and I'm gonna say demo sync client with task, and the only thing which I'm gonna change over here is I'm gonna use a type task over here. So you can see that the task is coming from the system.threading.task namespace. So I'm gonna call this task and I'm gonna call the run method. So this is gonna queue the specified work to run on the thread pool and returns a task object to the actual main thread which means once the task is complete, it's gonna again call the main thread to perform the operation. But until that, it's gonna put that particular operation in a thread pool so that it won't block the main thread itself. So I'm gonna call the task.run and I'm gonna open to braces over in here and I'm gonna close it something like this. And the same thing I'm gonna do here again, which is going to be this code. I'm gonna use a lambda expression and then I'm gonna put or close the particular braces over here. So this is the way that we can perform the operation of the task. And you can see that now the return type of this particular task is basically a task of string because it is the task operation that we are trying to do. And once we have done that, I then need to wait for the response. So I'm gonna use the wait method. I'm not gonna use the wait async yet because I'm not using an asynchronous operation. I'm just gonna write everything synchronously for now, just for the demonstration purpose, something like this. And now you can see that this code is gonna exactly do the same kind of code that we have written even before. So if I just comment this line of code, and if I just say sync web client dot demo sync HTTP client with the task, and if I try to run the code, I know the output of all the code remains the same. It is not gonna be exactly how you are looking for, but at least you are gonna start getting the value, something like this, but just get what, we are just getting a system.task of thread. There is also, because we're gonna be printing the response, which is of a task of string, I need to use a property called as result which is gonna give us a string output value. So we have to use this property. I completely missed that, even missed that in the slide. So we have to use this result property, which does that for me. So basically it's gonna print the output for us as a string over there. So you can see that now it is actually running us in a non-blocking fashion, pretty much like how we showed you the asynchronous coding with the async and await keyword. This is now async as well, but just that, we couldn't be able to see the actual output coming one after another, which I'll be talking about in our next lecture, like how we can actually do that from the task itself so that you gain more clarity of how the asynchronous operations are happening.